Hey guys, I'm so glad that you're here today. I want to welcome you all to The Well and welcome you to our family. My name is Paulina and I serve here on The Well team and we're so happy that you decided to take time out of your busy schedule to join us at church today. Whatever platform you're tuning into our service from, we know the Lord has something prepared for you today. We're going to spend some time in worship and we're going to get into the third part of our series on how to survive spiritually in a pandemic world. So wherever you are, we invite you to ready your hearts and lift up your hands as we surrender everything we're going through to God. So let's get ready to go into worship right now. Roaring with power and fighting our battles 
Hey family, my name is David. I'm one of the pastors here at The Well, and I really hope you all had an opportunity to surrender your worries and your stress to God during that worship. We have a couple of announcements for you today. And first off, if you're joining us for the first time today, we wanna to give you a little something just to show our appreciation. Now, if you look in the description, or if you're on our new platform, there's a connection card link that'll be in the chat. And all you have to do is fill it out and we'll send you a $5 Starbucks gift card just to say thank you. Secondly, we are still going to have our Halloween Fall Festival drive through on October 31st, starting at 6 p.m. So if you're in the Antelope Valley, we're gonna be handing out full-size candy bars. And don't worry, we will be following all CDC regulations. And lastly, we've started a meal train for our pastors as they go through this difficult time. And some of you may already know that Jenna's father passed away a couple weeks ago from cancer. And I wanna read a, a Bible verse on 2 Corinthians chapter 1, three through five. It says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us all in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. So if you would like to be that comfort to our pastors, during this difficult time, you can find the link in the description to sign up for a day, to take them a hot meal. But if you're too far to physically do that, you can just give financially or even order them a meal from Grubhub or, or DoorDash so that we can comfort them as they grieve their loss. All right, as we move into our time of giving, I wanna thank you all who have been continuing to give faithfully. Just extreme generosity has been shown and we're so grateful for that. And listen, if you haven't taken that step, let me encourage you to take that step today. I wanna to read Proverbs chapter three, verse nine through 10. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. You see, God isn't the one to promise something and not deliver. It isn't logical to give to God, right? You might be telling yourself, God doesn't need my money. And you're right, he doesn't. But he wants your heart. And when you are generous with God, it demonstrates the gratitude you have for his provision. So here are three ways that you can give. The first way is to text the Well of AV to 77977. Uh, you'll receive a link and you can just follow the steps there. And the second way is to go on our website, thewellofav.com click give now and also follow the steps there. And the third way that you can give is if you prefer, you can mail your gift to PO box 902031 Palmdale, California 93590. All right, that's it for the announcements today. Let's get ready to receive what God has for us today through Pastor Juan with the third part of our series on surviving spiritually in a pandemic world. Enjoy the service. It's as if we've wandered the desert, travelers without a home, together yet alone in this uncertainty. An uncommon time, unexpected, undefined, binds us, unites us, does not divide us, but reminds us of who we are. A body, not a building, unrelenting, unyielding, persevering, revealing the faithfulness of God. Maybe this virus has started a fire inside us, ignited us, inspired us to live louder, love harder, care deeper. Six feet, six miles, or a world apart. Our calling remains the same. For we are the body of Christ.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Well. Hey, I'm so excited you're here with us, especially if it's your first time here uh, checking us out. Man, I just want to extend a special and warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us here at The Well Church. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Juan Palomino, and I am one of the pastors here at The Well. Hey, and I also want to uh, thank all of you that, uh, that call The Well your church. Thank you so much for your love, for your support, your prayers, and uh, you know, being with us through this tough season that we've been going through. Well, we're in a series on spiritually surviving in the midst of a very unique and challenging time for all of us. But this series is not just about survival in general. You know, now that we've been going through this mess, right, for almost seven months, you know, certain areas have surfaced where if this is all a big life test, we aren't exactly getting an A+. For example, you know, we started off talking about how a lot of us haven't been using our time in a spiritually strategic way. In fact, we've been wasting a season where we have more time than ever, or at least more time than, than, than our schedules permit, right? And, and then last week, we looked at how it's easy, you know, uh, it's been easy to let ourselves get emotionally depleted, drained, and even tapped out. And how one of the big reasons is not simply the season that we're in, but how we've gotten away from God's prescription for emotional health and wholeness. All right. Well, today, I want us to look at a third area where some of us haven't been doing so well. And it's the area of giving into the temptation to turn inward giving ourselves over to our emotions, our felt needs, in ways that aren't really healthy. And I want us to look at this through the life of a man named Paul, the Apostle Paul, who knew what it meant to go through extremely challenging things in his own life. Now, if you're familiar with the New Testament, which is the second half of the Bible, Paul's name will be familiar to you already. See, Paul is often considered the greatest of all of the apostles. You know, that's the group of people who Jesus entrusted to lead the Christian movement following his life, death, and his resurrection. You know, he was certainly the most influential of them all. You know, Paul has also been called the greatest missionary that ever lived. He brought the message of Jesus Christ throughout the known world of his day. He founded multiple churches in multiple cities. And if that wasn't enough, God used him to write nearly half, yes, half of the New Testament. And there are 27 uh, books and letters in the New Testament, and Paul wrote at least 13 of them. And I, I say at least 13 because there's one book in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, that we don't know who wrote it, and many speculate it could have been uh, written by Paul too. So, what was Paul's reward for doing all of that? See, this is how he once described his life as, as an apostle for Jesus. And so if you have your Bibles right now, a physical Bible, pull that out. Or if you have uh, uh, your Bible app on your phone, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. That's where we're going to be at. And, and, and then pin somewhere also Philippians, because we're going to look at those two letters today. And so we're going to read verses 13 through 27. All right. So if you're there, hey, give me some hearts and some likes. All right, this is what it says. I have been in prison. I've been flogged. I've been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger in the country, in danger at sea. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. You know, Paul makes <laughs> what a lot of us are going through now, I mean, tough as it may be, hell in comparison. But in one of his letters in the Bible, Paul wrote about his attitude toward his life circumstances. Now remember this, attitude is everything. It's in this letter to the church in the city of Philippi, which is why this letter is called 
Philippians. And by the way, I want you to know that he wrote this letter <laughs> while he was in prison. He was in chains for his faith. So what did he have to say about all the bad things that he was going through? Man, all the challenges, the beatings that he took, all that, all that he could not do or experience or enjoy while he's in chains, right? All about all the ways his life had been disrupted. And before we read it together, you need to know that one of the reasons that Paul wrote this letter was because somebody wrote to him and asked him, hey, Paul, how are you doing? Right? They wanted to know. They wanted to know how he was holding up mentally, uh, how he was holding up emotionally, how he was holding up physically and spiritually. And this is what he wrote in reply. And this is in the letter to the Philippians in chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here, now listen to this, has helped to spread what? The good news. For everyone here, he's talking about people that are in prison with him, including the whole palace guard, which is thousands of, of, of people that are in prison, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Now, let's, let's just stop there, okay? And I want that to sink in for a minute. Remember, again, Paul is in prison for his faith. He's in chains in Rome. Now, back in those days, if you were in Roman custody, there would have been one of four situations going on in, in imprisonment. It would have been that you would have been locked up with or without chains or in military custody, being chained to a soldier, or you would have been released into the custody of a trustworthy person or released on bond. So Paul himself, he was under military guard, which meant that he would have been chained to a soldier and the guards selected for, for being chained to prisoners. Guess what? They were considered the worst of the worst. So what did Paul post on his first century Facebook or Instagram accounts? <laughs> he posted how good it is, what was happening to him. I mean, don't miss that because it was helping advance the cause for Christ. I mean, that was, that was what Paul was thinking about, all of the good that he was going through. And you could tell that he had spent some time thinking about the cup being half full, if you know what I mean, instead of half empty. First... He said it was good for all the prisoners, which, which again had numbered in the thousands. Why? Because those who had him imprisoned were seeing that his chains, what he was in bondage, right, were because of his faith in Christ and not for anything that he did wrong. And it was making them think, it was making them think about this Christian faith in fresh ways. And not only that, but it was challenging Christians who weren't in prison, that weren't locked up in, in chains to be bold and to be outspoken about their faith. You see, he challenged the sideline Christians. You know what I'm talking about? Those that are sitting in, in, the, in the bleachers and who hadn't stepped up to the plate, those that hadn't suited up and taken the field. But because Paul did, and he was willing to go uh, to prison for his faith, it really challenged them to get in the game. So for Paul, being in prison and in chains was a win for him. It was a win for others. And most of all, it was a win for Jesus. You know, Paul never wrote a single word about how awful prison was, how heavy and, and painful the chains were, whether he was cold or hungry or, or had how you know, he had been mistreated. You know, he wrote nothing to elicit personal sympathy, sympathy towards himself. You know, nothing that would reflect a, a preoccupation with self. All he ever wrote about was how people should see what was happening to him was something that God was using for good. Amen? You see, and, and this raises something, you know, few people ever think about. You know, let me ask you this. Have you ever asked God or maybe yourself, why is this happening to me? You know, why aren't things going the way I want them to go? 
You know, why am I stuck with, you know, kids working from home or, or having to wear a face mask and, and I can't go to the movies or to a sports game? Man, I want to be at the World Series right now. I know we see people out there, but, you know, there's also financial situations, right? <laughs> what if, let me ask you, let me put this in your mind. What if maybe the real questions that we should be asking are, what can all of this bring about for me and for others and for Jesus? How can God use me and through what I am in and going through? You see, rather than focusing on all that isn't going your way, all that you don't like, all that you wish was different, which is letting yourself again turn inwardly and focusing on your emotions, maybe you should focus on all that this could allow God to do in you. All that God wants to do through you. In other words, what if you were determined to turn outward. Let me explain what I mean by that. You see, Paul, he didn't want to be in jail any more than, than, than we would, what we would want to be, right? Especially us feeling like we're going or we're in jail in this pandemic. But you can imagine how we must have, how he must have felt when one of his jailers found God simply because he was in jail to tell him about God. You see, Paul was actually pumped up about what was happening as a result of him being in prison in chains? What it was doing in the lives of others? What it might be enabling in terms of advancing the cause and the kingdom of God? You know, Paul knew that this wasn't about him. He knew that everything was about what it could mean for others. And most importantly, don't miss this, what it could mean for God which is one of the reasons this is so challenging. I mean, even for me, you see, for most of us, what's our default? Our default is almost always the same when it comes to what? To pain and sadness and difficulty and challenge in our lives. You see, we almost intuitively, what do we turn to? We turn to self-pity, self-preoccupation, and self-concern. Did you catch the common theme there? It's self, right? We think about ourselves. We don't think about the good that that could come out of it, much less how it might positively affect other people. You see, our goal is seemingly for people to feel sorry for us, sympathy for us, to feel our pain, and then for us to get stuck in it. You know, I've been guilty of focusing on, on all we don't have, all that I can't do, all that isn't going our way, all that I don't like about this pandemic and, you know, this past, you know, this 2020 that we're still in and how things are an inconvenience. In other words, we make it all about us. Come on. If you know what I'm talking about, let's have a moment of confession here. You know, how many of you have fallen into the same trap? Let me see some angry faces, some angry face emojis or some wow emojis out there. Come on, put them out there. Yes, come on, let's confess. You know, the Bible says, let me give you a bonus one, that if we confess our sins to one another, we will be healed. <laughs> but Paul, all right, Paul's attitude was this. It's not about me. Paul felt like what was happening was more about what God wanted to do through him than what was happening to him. And because of that, God did use it. He used him. He used it to impact his jailers you know, he used it to impact the Christian community outside of the jail. Did you catch that? He used it to impact everyone in the city of Philippi who received this letter. And he used it to impact people throughout history as, as part of the Bible. Hence, we're reading it. And, and he's still using it today, impacting us even today. Remember, we're talking about Paul's prison time. Isn't that, I mean, just mind-blowing? You know, most of us are feeling like, like we're in prison right now and, and in chains. And, and, and these chains are hard, right? They're cold, they're heavy, and they're binding. And, and with chains comes loss. You know, during this pandemic, haven't we all lost something? You know, we've all lost a certain amount of our personal freedom and, and had our lifestyles impacted in ways that, that really frustrate and debilitate us. You know, some of you, have lost income or you've lost a job. You know, some of you have lost physically connecting, you know, with your loved ones. You know, over 200,000 people now to date have died in the U.S. alone. And we've even lost a loved one, you know, due to death itself through this pandemic. But listen to me. Don't let that just be a statistic that you become numb to. 
You know, these were people with names and faces and families and friends, right? And it didn't help that many of us entered, you know, already, you know, with a few chains ourselves, or, or we already had some, some new ones thrown into whatever COVID threw our way. You know, you may have had a, a miscarriage. You may have been diagnosed with breast cancer through the season. You may have been dealing with a rebellious teenager at home, and you may have, have a parent with Alzheimer's. Uh, you may have gotten divorced through the season. And, and I want to acknowledge that your chains are real. But no matter how real your chains are, and, and, and they were real for Paul also, your choice, remember that, your choice to turn inward or turn outward like Paul did is just as real. And, and let me tell you something. I guarantee you that, that you couldn't be with Paul just five minutes and not know which choice he had made. So let me ask you a question. What would five minutes with you reflect? If someone were to go on your Facebook page, read all of your posts or your Instagram or your tweets on Twitter and just scroll through all that, all that stuff, would they see an inward person or an outward focus of your life? If they spent with you in a, some time in a Zoom meeting or, or FaceTimed you, you know, what would they say afterward about your mindset and your spirit today? What, what would they walk away with, right? Would they, would they walk away being confronted in, in new, fresh ways with power in the presence of Jesus Christ? You know, after seeing you and hearing you, would they want to live bolder lives for Christ or feel enabled to just whine and complain and critique more? Do they find joy where, where they couldn't find joy before and see the good where they couldn't see the good? You know, see Christ where they didn't see Christ before because of some time spent with you. You know, when we turn inward, we need to, we need to turn outward. And that, that, those two things are just so, they contrast each other so sharp, you know, so sharply, right? When you have a person that is inward turned and the other person that's turned outward, I mean, they clash, but that's just Paul's attitude toward what he was going through personally. You see, he went to tell the Philippians how he was feeling about all of life itself. And so let me read it to you. You know, this is in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 through 26, if you're following along. This is what Paul said. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. We're going to touch that a little bit later. Hang on to that. If I, if I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know, for I am torn between the two. Now remember, he's talking about living or dying. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body, convinced of this. I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus, listen to this, will overflow on account of me. You, see, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know what's one amazing thing about Paul, and I laugh inside because you know, Paul didn't know whether he was going to live or die or eventually be released or even be executed. But for Paul, when it came to living, when it came to life and death, I mean, he confidently knew that he was in a no-lose situation. Whether he lived or died, no matter what, but you know, both were fine with him. Why? Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, that really is stunning to think about, right? But for the Christ follower, for you and me, I mean, that's something that we should all be saying because it's so true. You know, to live is Christ. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? Well, it means that, that we are able to be in a relationship with Christ on mission for Christ if we're alive and, and having the privilege of, of having anything at all to do with Christ Jesus. It's having the deepest needs of your life intersected by Christ. Okay, and to die, well, what does that mean? Well, even better, Paul says, because to die, listen to me, to die just means more of Christ. That means that we're going to be in full union, full intimacy, free of, of sin of this world and pain. And there's going to be no more tears, the Bible says. We're going to be in eternity in heaven and everything heaven has to offer. But that's not all. 
No, that's not all. To die was also gain because it, it meant that if, if he was martyred, it would be fuel for the Christian movement even more so, which guess what? It did. And we have multiplied ever since the first century to well over 2 billion. That's right. That's a B. 2 billion professed Christians around the globe. And that's how Paul viewed his life while he was in prison, while he was in chains. He said to live is Christ, to die is gain. Unfortunately, for a lot of folks out there, right? The line, the line instead, of, instead of to live is Christ, to die is gain, it's this. To live is me, <laughs> it's all about me, and to die just sucks. And, and right now, that living for me, right? That turned inward engagement of life it, is the spiritual pandemic that we're really in, that we've allowed this virus, right? This pandemic to spread. You see, we're not thinking about how God might want to use this or use us during this time. See, we're just consumed with what we want, what we need, right? How we want to be served, how, how, you know, ministered to and fed. And collectively as Christ followers, please don't miss this. We need to lovingly but firmly confront that kind of spirit. And, and for those of you who are followers of Jesus, this I'm gonna speak to you. And if you consider me your pastor, okay? Here at the Well Church, I need to lovingly challenge you on this. For example, right now, you know, you may want to worship corporately and publicly and you can't. You know, you want to have interaction with others physically and you can't. But instead of accepting that and turning outwardly and asking God how he wants to use you during this time, how he wants you to contribute and invest in this time. You know, I've heard some people say things like, or they've posted on, on social media, things like, you know, I, I don't want to watch church online. Why? Because I just can't worship that way. Or, you know, I tried it <laughs> and it's not for me. You know, I can't get anything out of it that way. Do you hear how, how turned inward that is? You know, how that makes it all about us? You know, what if instead we said, now hear me out. You know, I know people who would never walk into a church, but they might check it out online. You know, since everybody and, and everything is online, this is my chance to invite people like crazy online. You know, or what if you said, you know, I know right now I can't worship like I used to before COVID, but that just means I can really work at being a private worshiper at home. And, and if I read my Bible and pray, that's the heart of my relationship with Jesus. Or what if, what if you said, my church is online and my pastor's online and my worshiping community is online. So that means God must have something special for me and others online and I don't want to miss it. Or let me give you another one. I can't engage others the way I would like, but I can take it upon myself to be someone who reaches out in every way I can. Church, I want you to know, I, 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 could, I could tell you so many stories of people who have chosen to turn outward instead of inward during this time. For example, you know, we, we've been blessed by worship leaders from other churches who, I mean, they take, they take the time to rehearse and record and film online, you know, worship, you know, for us to use it right here at the well. The worship that you saw this morning came from somewhere else. You know, there's people out serving the homeless population and distributing hygiene products for them. Sure, being COVID safe, right? And there's people serving at the food bank and, and, and on and on it goes. You know, we have volunteers during the week that lead our community groups online on Zoom, right? They share, they're sharing God's word, they're praying for one another and they're being in community. Listen to me, please. If all we can do during this time is complain about our spiritual needs not being met. We have been we, we have given ourselves over to ourselves. And to be honest with you, I believe I truly believe as your pastor that we could do better than that. I mean, do you remember what we just read? Paul was saying, "Here's what here's what would be best for me spiritually to die and, and to be with Christ, but it's not best for you spiritually." So guess what? I will die to myself for you. See, for Paul, his spiritual life was not about him. His spiritual life was about others. 
And Paul would challenge us that we can just be as, as worldly with our spiritual desires as we can with our fleshly desires. You know, it's called spiritual narcissism. I don't know if you know this, but in Greek mythology, Narcissus is the character who, upon passing his reflection in the water, becomes so enamored with himself that he devotes the rest of his life to his own reflection. You know, from this, we get our term narcissism, which is the preoccupation with self, right? The value of narcissism is the classic I, me, mine mentality that places personal pleasure and fulfillment at the forefront of concerns. You know, in so many places and in so many ways, a, a spiritual narcissism has invaded the Christian community, the church, and maybe now more than ever. Listen, eavesdrop for a moment, okay? Eavesdrop on how Christians, you know, talk and the kinds of things that they post on Facebook and Instagram. You know, I, I wanna go where, where I'm being fed, they say. Have you ever heard somebody say that, a Christian? I wanna go where I'm being fed. Instead of saying, I wanna go where I can learn to feed myself and even better, feed others. Or how about this one? I need to be ministered to. <laughs> As if ministry in the life of Christ, of a Christ follower is something that happens to us. Instead of something that we make happen through us for others. How about this one, right? We finish watching an online service or, or a physical worship experience. If you get have that opportunity and we say, oh, I didn't get anything out of it. You know, that, that was just a waste of my time. As if it's, if its purpose was for we to get something out of it instead of what God got out of it. Did you guys catch that? See, where did all this come from though? Well, it wasn't from Jesus. See, Jesus didn't talk that way. He said, I did not come to be served but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. He said, whoever wants to be first must become last. He also said, whoever wants to be great amongst, uh, amongst must become the slave of all. Then he said, not my will, but yours, Father. Oh, and let's not forget that he was the one, the night before he died, he washed the feet of his followers. And yet, a spiritual narcissism has invaded our thinking where our individual needs and desires have become the center of attention. Which is why when someone says, I don't want to worship online, it's not for me, you know, I don't get anything out of it. <laughs> you know what I want to say to that person? It's not about whether you get anything out of it. It's about whether God got anything out of it from you. See, none of us like not being able to meet together. And I get that. And listen, I don't like it either. But it's the reality of our world. And the call of the Christ follower is to fully engage the worship of God and the service of God in every way we can, no matter, listen to me, no matter the circumstances. And you want Paul, you want a Paul parallel, how this parallels what I'm talking about? You know, Paul's chains meant that, that he had a new mission. New opportunities came about and there were new breakthroughs. See, the truth is that the church going online since March, let me give you some stats here, right? Has meant that the message of Christ is reaching millions more than at any other time in human history. See, there's many more of you watching me right now who weren't watching me before the pandemic. In fact, you wanna know something that is beyond cool? Ready? I remember when we began praying and dreaming about planting this church, the well in Palmdale. You know, we talked about one day being able to reach people globally <laughs> and traveling around the world preaching the good news of Jesus. And we started meeting in our backyard on Easter almost two years ago. And we had a total of almost 60 people, 57 to be exact, 42 adults, 15 uh, kids, and they showed up to our first service. Then the pandemic hit and, and, and the world went online, right? And new opportunities opened up. And we've reached people all around the country now and even the world with our posts on Facebook and Instagram and, and, and our church service and our YouTube channel has reached globally people. And I, I genuinely, listen to me, I genuinely think about what an impact we would have, you know, we would continue to have going online. 
but it has been overwhelmingly a blessing to serve you every single week online. And who would have thought that a pandemic would shut our weekend services down physically, but through that, we would have reached more people locally and globally. See, do we want to meet publicly? Do we want to worship together with you? Do we want to engage with you physically? And I want to hug all of you? Yes, it's a resounding yes. But like Paul, I thank God for these chains. And so should you. So as I wrap up, I know that everything you're feeling and experiencing tempts you to focus on yourself, on what your needs are, what your wants are, your own desires, and your challenges. Everything calls you to turn inward. Don't do it. I want to encourage you instead to, to repeat these words over and over again. To live as Christ and to die is gain. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. God in heaven, thank you so much that we have these letters from your apostles, your disciples, that these, these words are, are from you. They're God-inspired. They're infallible. They're inerrant. They're perfect. And they encourage us in circumstances, in, in times of challenges, when we're specifically like right now, 2020, Lord, this year, you know more than anybody else that it's been challenging. But yet we see Paul turning outward, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and using the situation that he's in, despite the pain, despite his hunger, despite maybe anguish, all of his emotions as a human being, he focused on the good. And because he knew that you were with him there spiritually, the Bible tells us that your word tells us that your spirit is alive inside of us. I pray that every single person, every one of us listening today to this message does not forget that. That when we're going through a valley, that we're, when we're at the mountaintop, God, that you are with us. You told us you would never leave us nor forsake us. I pray that we turn outwardly, that this message impacts, convicts us in our hearts and our minds to hit that share button, to share the good news, what we read in our devotions, uh, you know, God, what you're doing in our lives, to be transparent, to be open, to reach that one person that needs hope, that needs to know you. Because without you, we only turn inwardly and we're hopeless and we have no future. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for your word. May we go and reach more people for your kingdom's sake, no matter what our circumstances are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you, if you prayed with me, thank you for, uh, for praying with me. But as always, you know, uh, I want to speak to that person maybe today that got an invitation. Maybe you jumped online and, and this is your first time joining us. And maybe you're feeling that tug in your heart and you're saying, I want to know Jesus. I want to have a relationship with him. I, I've, I've searched and I've looked at, you know, all kinds of things in this world and, and none of it makes sense. And none of it has, has really fulfilled me and completed me in my heart. And all I know how to do is turn inwardly and, and I don't know how to deal with these emotions of hopelessness and, and, and feeling helpless. Well, I want you to know that there is hope and there is help. And there's a hand that is extending to you and it's the hand of God that sent his one and only son to die for your sins. And I don't care what's happened in your life. I don't care you know, what you're going through. Uh, again, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you may feel like you're in chains. You may be literally are in chains. Maybe you're watching this from prison. You know, this message is going out everywhere. But I'm here today to tell you that if you extend your hand and meet that hand, the hand of God, he'll do the same like he did for me. And he'll forgive you of all of your sins. And he will come into your life and give you hope and give you a future. And so if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, I gladly would love to lead you in prayer. And it's not the prayer itself, but it's the belief. It's all about belief in your heart. And you invite God into your heart. And I would want to invite you right now to pray with me if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And he will give you a new life like he did for me. And he's done for so many others. 
Would you pray with me? Just simply say this, say, God, forgive me for I have sinned against you. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die, to pay the penalty for my sins on the cross. And I believe that you resurrected him on the third day. And God, fill me with your Holy Spirit to lead me the rest of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, my brother and sister. Hey, I want you to know that when you pray that prayer, the Bible also tells us that you become part of God's family. So you are now my brother and sister in Christ. Hey, I wanna encourage you to stay plugged in, keep plugging in. If you need a Bible, reach out to us. Or if you need prayer personally, reach out to us. You know, you can go in the description, fill out a connection card. I invite you to do that. Let us know what your needs are. Uh, you know, we have people that are ready to pray for you. And if you need a Bible, we'd like to send you a physical Bible as well. Stay plugged in and take the next step of your faith journey. If you need to get into a community group, get involved, you know, go to the connection card, fill that out and say, I want to get involved and learn more about the Bible, learn more about Jesus. If you want to take the next step of your faith journey, you've been a follower of Jesus. I don't care if it's one day or five years, 10 years, and you want to get baptized. We are ready to help you take that next step of your faith and help you get baptized. Uh, but don't do life alone. All right. Hey, thank you so much for joining me uh, this week. Uh, tune in for next week as we wrap up this message, Spiritually Surviving in a Pandemic World. God bless you all. Have a great week. Picture perfect on the surface All these illusions that we worship I see the walls, see the walls coming down I hope someday we'll build them up on solid ground Consequences go unnoticed Like the weight that's on our shoulders Pulling us down, pulling us down But we don't know it Or maybe we do just like the truth, we never show it. We don't need my money. Cause money ain't the problem, baby. What are we becoming? Cause we lost more time than we'll ever get back. And we need something to keep us on track. sense on paper surface levels are we safer don't let them in don't let them in in case they find somewhere within under the skins where you hide we need more than cunning words that don't solve nothing what all along but we just didn't know it maybe we've been so wrapped up in the world that we missed the point and now it's showing how can we turn it around to hear the sound of inner peace maybe it's simpler than we think it should be where we go